Right you lot, in today's video I'm going to be discussing Grady Dean Garner's what looks like imminent departure to West Brom Albion. Obviously the Telegraph reported this morning that West Brom had sent in a bid of £12 million that's been accepted by West Ham with the potential of it rising to £18 million. Grady Dean Garner had a brilliant season last season with West Brom as we know. He's previously played in the England under 21s, will probably push for it this season. Um, he's got eight goals and six assists. Um, as well as a number of different stats, including 60 progressive runs, the most dribbles in the West Brom team, etc. He was a standout star in that West Brom side. And um, the decision to sell him this early on is, is nothing short of perplexing. That's me putting it lightly. The bloke is worth easily over £20 million. Even in this current market, his, his potential is there to see. He was coming back into the squad, he's performed well in pre-season, particularly against Ipswich and then moving forward against Brentford, he looked lively again. He gives so much to our attack in terms of pace and power and interchangeability with the front men and it looked like we'd finally found someone who had the perfect link-up play with Allaire to finally get him in the right place to get the goals um, and to start showing his value in a West Ham side. So. I think, if anything, this is an asset stripping strategy. I don't know what the motive behind it is. I think there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes that we don't know about. If you actually look at the transfer window so far, we've lost out on every single one of our major targets or the major targets we were led to believe. Shane Duffy's gone to Celtic, Anthony Robertson's gone to Fulham, Matty Cash has gone to Aston Villa, Ben Rama is kicking around somewhere, but for 25 mil, we probably won't bring him in. Ollie Watkins looking to go to Villa. A number of key signings that we need to make in particular areas we haven't made any movement towards or they've moved elsewhere. Ezzy to QPR. Now this is the this is the crucial thing here. Some people said, a lot of West Ham fans said, I would be happy if we didn't get Ezzy, if we kept Dean Garner. We've got Dean Garner. Why would we need to sign anybody else? And this is why. Because they play this silly little chess game where we don't know what's going on and they're making moves behind the scenes that doesn't make any sense from a football perspective. Grady Dean Garner is worth a lot more than what they're trying to sell him for. It's a disgusting deal. £12 million up front with add-ons, with add-ons to come to less than £20 million in the Premier League. Now, ultimately, West Ham next season, I can't comment too much on, on them until we've seen five games from West Ham to suggest where we're going to be. But let's be honest. But what it looks like is West Brom are going to be in and around us. We're effectively selling to a rival in the lower end of the table and giving them our, one of our better players who's, who's proven he's done well at that club before, and they're happy to do it. And this is the thing we all need to, to be aware of. All these decisions that are being made are not football decisions. Those people who are in charge of the club aren't interested in the football side of it. And ultimately, they're throwing David Moyes under the bus before the season's already started. And let's look at the players we've sold. Hugh Gill for, what, 1.5? 2.5 or whatever it was. A Jetty for, for 5? You know, Dean Garner for 12. I mean, it's embarrassing. You know, it is, it is truly embarrassing um, management from that board. It is, it, it's another level from them. It's another level from them. And I think this is something that I need to touch on as well. This club has very rarely, under their leadership, been in charge of actual sellable assets. And this may be the, one of the few times that I can think of that we've had a number of sellable assets. Forget Hugh Gill and Ajeti maybe to a degree because I think we were always going to make a loss on them because of the way that they were purchased, because of the board to pool negotiation and their inability to get more money for these players. But when we're talking about high end, when we're talking about Dean Garner, Rice, all those types of players, Pyatt, another example. When they get to that point where they've got a player that they could get more money for, they bottle it. Now they've, now they've gone on Dean Garner and they've gone on him at 12. What are they going to do with Declan Rice? I, honestly, it frightens me. It frightens me what they're going to do with him because let's be clear here, all of the journalists across the board have stated that West Ham need to sell. Why we need to sell this heavily at the detriment of our you know, Premier League safety of what it looks like, I've got no idea. But this is everything. This is everything that is wrong with a football club at the moment. It's the one time that they've had where they've had actual sellable assets and they've shown that they're incompetent at selling and getting that resale value. That's why we'll never push on. You can forget, take all the other stuff in the investment now. Take that out of it. It actually shows that even if West Ham have brilliant academy assets, players coming through with huge potential, that they can't sell and that they can't reinvest. And that is why we will never, ever, 
ever move forward with them in charge. I'd love to have had a really positive video today. I really, really would. This has really taken it way too far. I think we're waiting on a Declan Rice transfer as far as I'm concerned. He'll look at that and he'll say, why am I at West Ham if they're not willing to invest? And quite frankly, I can completely understand where he's coming from. But obviously, until next time, try and take care.